Hello, friend! I am so glad you are here to join me today. I'm really excited for our project. Are you ready? We are going to take apart ta -ta -da, a computer keyboard. Yeah! So, these are really useful, but sometimes things break. And once they break, we usually want to throw them away. But before we throw things away, we can use them to learn how that thing works. So in this case, we can open up this broken computer keyboard and learn how it works by seeing what is inside. We can also use broken things to make new stuff out of the parts and pieces that we find inside. Let's try and do both today. If you don't have a spare computer keyboard lying around, ask an adult that you love and trust if they have any spare electronics. I would recommend things that are broken because it can be really tricky to put stuff back together. So if it's broken, it's okay. It's also good to ask for help too. It would be nice to do this with a, an adult that you love and trust because it's super fun and it's a great way to stay safe and to learn together. Before we take things apart, we will need some tools. All right, here are the tools that we will need. A screwdriver that's flat like this and a Phillips screwdriver that is kind of pointy like this. And it has four sides. I also like to have a flashlight so that we can better see things as well as a magnifying glass. Yeah. Ooh, the camera is upside down at this distance. That's really interesting. If you have one of these, they are super handy. It's okay if you don't. You might ask your adult if they have one of these. It's called a driver kit. It has the base that's like a screwdriver, but it has lots of different types of tops that we can add and they have different shapes on them. So this one is a star. It's a little bit hard to see, but that's okay. And sometimes with electronics, especially things like smartphones and laptops, they have different kinds of screws and these will help to open those up safely. If you don't have one of those, that's okay. Getting a few different kinds of these that are different sizes should be good to go. Computer keyboards are typically pretty straightforward. I would also recommend some small containers. Look around your house and see what you have. These used to have little desserts in them that were super delicious. Mm. But I also really liked the containers that they came in, and so I kept them. They're really handy for small parts, like the screws that we will take out of the keyboard, and holding other parts that we want to store and use for later, or just for keeping our workspace clean. I also really like to use a hard surface like a cutting mat or a wooden board when I take things apart, so that I protect the stuff underneath. It's very good. And lastly, I love having crafting supplies for all of my projects because you never know when you're going to need them. Plus, things like scissors are super handy. And tape, maybe a couple of different kinds of tape, and a pencil, and cardboard. Yay, cardboard. I love cardboard. There are so many things you can do with cardboard. Okay, once you've gathered your materials, we are ready to take our keyboard apart. Yay, let's have at it. All right, now that we are settled and we have our tools, let's take apart our keyboard, yeah. So first, most of the time, the screws are on the bottom. So flip it over. And this is one of my favorite parts about taking things apart, is you get to explore how the engineers hid all of the screws and sometimes they are very clever. So if you can't find the screws, they're not obvious. On the keyboard, I think I can see all of them, but we will find out. If you can't see them, sometimes it helps to feel around 
on the part and see if anything feels a little bit different. Uh oh. And if you can't, still can't open it up, try peeling back tape or looking under rubber feet. See what you can find. The other thing I love about taking things apart is that it gives me something to do with my hands. It's a little bit of a puzzle, but it lets my mind wander. And it also lets me think about how I feel. It's a really helpful way for me to feel better when I'm feeling sad or angry or anxious or frustrated. What sorts of things do you do when you're feeling sad or angry or anxious or frustrated? It's good to have ways to feel our feelings and to have ways to feel better. Ugh. These are being tricky. Ah, uh, sometimes when I'm already frustrated or angry and things aren't working, it makes me feel worse. Does that ever happen to you? Ah, uh, this screwdriver doesn't fit in this hole. Oh no. You know what? I'm gonna try a different screwdriver. It's good for us to make space for our feelings so that we can think about what we feel and why we feel that way. Because when we know why we feel some way, we can say hello to those feelings and we can make space for them. We can process them a little bit better. And that helps to learn healthy ways to feel our feelings. But it does take practice. None of us really know how to deal with our feelings at first. We have to learn and, and try things and sometimes try something different like when this screwdriver was making me really frustrated, so I decided to set it down and try something different. And sometimes we need to ask for help, and that's okay. We all need help sometimes, and we can all learn from each other. <gasps> One last screw, we're almost there. Okay, let's see if that did it. I am feeling the tape and I don't think there are any others. <gasps> it sounds like it's gonna come apart. Ooh, here we go. I'm gonna be gentle because I don't wanna break anything. Eh, almost. Almost. It's a little bit stuck back here. Eh. Oh no! Maybe there is another screw. <gasps> I forgot one. It's important to double check sometimes. Aha! When we're trying to take electronics apart, that's a really good lesson. If it doesn't come apart, and look how easy that was. Oh, that's so silly. See, I still have lots to learn too. Even though I've done this lots of times, every time I do it, I learn something new. <gasps> look at the top of our keyboard. And now that I've taken it off, the keys don't pop back up. That's really interesting. I'm going to set that down 
and let's take a closer look together. All right, now we can get a closer look. I hope it's a little bit easier to see. Here is the top of our keyboard. Now that it's open, I can push the key up from the bottom <laughs> like that. <gasps> oh, this would be a fun music maker. I might set that aside for later. This is what the bottom looks like. <laughs> Very cool. <gasps> Ooh, this is a special piece. What do you notice? It looks so interesting inside. This is a little piece of plastic, but it's flexible. It feels very smushy. I like the way it feels. I wonder Hmm. Interesting. The bumps in the plastic fit underneath the keys. Hmm. I wonder what those do. Let's peel that away. <gasps> Ooh. Oh, this is very silly. I like this a lot. I'm gonna put that aside too. What do you notice up here? <gasps> wow. It's flexible. That is so fascinating. I was certainly not expecting that. Wow. I also notice that the cable the keyboard uses to plug into a computer comes in here and wraps here and plugs into this brown board like that. What do you notice? <laughs> this is so awesome. I love looking inside things. You never know what you're going to find. I thought there were going to be a lot more parts. Interesting. I like this part a lot because it fits over these little things here. And if I look at the top of the keyboard, I can see three holes that I think they poke through. And I seem to remember the keyboard having some lights on it. So I wonder if these are lights. I wonder how I could test that. I see more screws, so let's take it apart. Hmm, this is very interesting. I was certainly expecting more parts and pieces to build things with, but that's okay. This is fascinating. I haven't seen a keyboard like this before, have you? What sorts of things could we make with the parts inside this keyboard? <gasps> the screws were holding down this metal bar, which was holding down, I'm gonna use my screwdriver to gently 
maybe. <gasps> I know. I will use the actual regular screwdriver to gently pry it up. Oh, that worked way easier. <gasps> That's so interesting. Let me see if I can, aha, pop the cord out. Let's get a closer look. What? And that's the bottom. What do you notice? I wonder if I can get one of these lights to turn on. I don't know if I can do it, but we will try. One of the things I like to have on hand are different types of batteries. Have you ever used a battery before? <gasps> oh, we did it. These are called coin cell batteries. Oh, that's really interesting. If I can turn one on, the others turn on a little bit. So this battery has some writing on one side and no writing on the other side. There are two sides of this. And if we look on the bottom, the lights are right here. They have two little legs. And if I sandwich the legs so that one touches one side of the battery and the other leg touches the other side of the battery, I can turn on. It didn't work at first. And I was pretty sure I was touching both sides of the battery. So, because it didn't work, I tried something different. I flipped it around and that worked, maybe. <laughs> but now I can't get it again. Maybe I will try it this way again. There we go, that way it worked. So if something doesn't work in one way, try it a different way. You never know what will happen. I think this kind of looks like a face right here. So what I wanna do, I wanna make a creature to express the way that I am feeling today. I wonder if this unplugs. I don't think it does. Nope, but that's okay. I'm gonna move these out of the way so I have some space to work. And I'm gonna draw, I'm gonna, whoops, here we'll scoot back. Now, I'm going to draw I draw a square and some triangles with some circles. I'm going to cut the head out with my scissors. Since I'm on a cutting mat, I'm going to go like this. If you do this, be sure to have an adult with you. I would recommend cutting it out directly instead. Okay, and then we can pop square out maybe I think I need to do it a little bit better or I can fold and 
cut like that. There we go. And then I can peel it away. And then I can carefully cut this. Okay. And now we have And now what I want to do is use some tape to hold this in place, just like that. Okay. Where do I want to hold it in place? I'm going to just take some tape and put it on the side. So when I get the right placement, I like that. Okay. Oops, that didn't work very well. Let's get a bigger piece of tape. Oops, I think I need to keep that open. Let's try that. Okay, maybe one more piece of tape. Okay. Okay. <laughs> that makes me really happy. And now I can take my battery. Maybe. And I can turn on one of the lights. Or eyes. What kind of creatures would you make? I like to make creatures that express how I'm feeling. And sometimes I like to make creatures that make me laugh if I'm feeling not so happy. Because it always makes me feel better. <laughs> so silly. Oh, I love this. So, take the things that you find inside the keyboard and see what you can make with them. Think about how you're feeling and make a character that feels the way that you feel. Or maybe make a character that you wish you had right now to tell you jokes and make you laugh, or to just listen to you. And sometimes we can talk to our characters. I like to do that. I would love to see what you make. That would make me really happy. So please share any photos or descriptions of the things that you make. You can ask an adult to help you. All right. I will let you go forth and explore, continue looking inside things, and practicing working with tools. They're super fun and useful. And let me know if you have any questions. Thank you so much for joining me today. I'm so glad that you are here with me. I will see you soon. Goodbye, friend! Yay!